Okay. Can you see it? My name is Tahal Tassin and I'm from the class of 2019. So I grew up in uh, Lahore. I spent all of my life there. As a child, I was actually um, really fat, I would say. We used to live in this uh, little neighborhood, like imagine like the fattest child possible. And then I was fatter than that. Only our family, like my first words, it was hardi boti roti, like bone, meat and bread. So I think mom and dad was like seventh or eighth down the line. The way my mom tells me, I would just sit at the dining table and just keep eating and then just sleep there. Um, I used, I, I'm really like really close to my sister. We had this little water tank at the top of the house and we just sit there. Back in those days, basant used to be a huge thing. Everyone would just, you know, go to their roofs and like get kites and fly them. You could see like the entire neighborhood because all of them like are on their roofs. So just sitting there on that tank and like looking at the sky just completely covered with uh, kites. And then it got banned. <laughs> and also growing up, I was kind of shy. Like I would not speak that much to anyone, not even my parents. That changed when I, you know, came into like high school. Um, so my debate coach used to just like pressure me, just be like, you know what? Nobody's gonna speak today, it's only gonna be Taha. I was just like, you know, I got more used to talking around people. And uh, I'm glad that I'm not that shy, introverted uh, kid, slightly over overweight kid anymore. <laughs> I feel like people say that they have like one mother tongue. I grew up speaking Urdu as my mother tongue. Most of my education has been in English. I feel like I read English better. I write English better. But at the same time, I feel like I speak Urdu much better. And like as life goes on, it gets like, like that becomes even more true. My father himself uh, doesn't write that often, but knows a lot of poetry and is really into it. My uncle is actually a poet. How I got into Urdu Shairi was that my uncle, right, I used to, uh, so he used to write and then he would give me those like pages with his handwriting and he'd be like, Taha, can you get this composed from somewhere? Like somebody to like transcribe. I would go to like a, like a store and then like have it written down. I'm more towards the side of like a more Munir Niazi type poetry where the language is much more simple and you're talking about like basic concepts like, you know, like love, devotion, etc. Or even like, you know, like a more revolutionary kind of Habib Jalib type poetry as opposed to, you know, the classics like Alam Akbal or Fez where the language is like too, you know, too difficult for you to understand in the first place. Um, when I came to Singapore, it was super different from what my father had described it. Singapore just keeps on changing. So this one time uh, we cycled. So the plan was to cycle all the way to the Marina Barrage and come back to sleep. I don't know if this is legal, <laughs> but Pragya and I are not that fit and we just slept there. Actually, Pragya got woken up by one of the sprinklers. And then she woke me up. She was like, Taha, this is enough. We need to go. <laughs> so like, I'm super interested in like, for example, in a South Asian context, the way the 1947 partition, you know, affected people. And I've like read up a lot on it. And I've like talked to a lot of people who went through it. Uh, my own grandparents, for example. So I'm actually working on something that nobody knows. I'm trying to write like a novel. I've been working on it for like, like six or seven months. Um, so it follows a character um, who is, who lives in the 1940s in South Asia. Um, and then it basically follows the story of partition for that person, what he's seeing, feeling, etc., etc. Over the winter, um, I was reading this book, um, which was basically a collection of letters from the British Empire. So, you know, it was called The Last Children of the Raj. So, you know, like, like children of, you know, the colonial government, like actual children, how, what their experiences were. Uh, growing up in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, or like pre pre colonial India, so I feel like that gives me a lot of insight into what life was like that back back then, and especially for a child, there's still a long way to go, and I feel like I have a lot to learn as well.